Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Orkin Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today's Wednesday, March 24th, 2020, and here are the 2021, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 5, verses 16 through 25. But the Lord of hosts is exalted in justice, and the holy God shows himself holy in righteousness. Then shall the lambs graze as in their pasture, fatlings and kids shall feed among the ruins. Woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of falsehood, who draw sin with a cart rope, who say, let him make haste, let him speed his work that we may see it. Let the purpose of the Holy One of Israel draw near and let it come that we may know it. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and shrewd in their own sight. Woe to those who are heroes at drinking wine and valiant men in mixing strong drink, who acquit the guilty for a bribe and deprive the innocent of his right. Therefore, as the tongue of fire devours the stubble, and as the dry grass sinks down in the flame, so their root will be as rottenness, and their blossom go up like dust. For they have rejected the law of the Lord of hosts, and they have despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore the anger of the Lord is kindled against his people, and he stretched out his hand against them and smote them. And the mountains quaked, and their corpses were as refuse in the midst of the streets. For all of this, his anger is not turned away, and his hand is stretched out still. And today's reading from Proverbs is Proverbs chapter 5, verses 15, to chapter 6, verse 3. Drink water from your own cistern, flowing water from your own well. Should your springs be scattered abroad in streams of water in the streets, let them be for yourself alone and not for strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth, a lovely hind, a graceful doe. Let her affection fill you at all times with delight and be infatuated always with her love. Why should you be infatuated, my son, with a loose woman and the embrace of the bosom of an adventuress? For a man's ways are before the eyes of the Lord, and he watches all his paths. The iniquities of the wicked ensnare him, and he is caught in the toils of his sin. He dies for lack of discipline, and because his great folly he is lost. My son, if you have become surety for your neighbor, have given a pledge for a stranger. If you are snared in the utterance of your lips, caught in the words of your mouth, then do this, my son, and save yourself. For you have come into your own neighbor's power. Go, hasten, and importune your neighbor. And then finally, we have a reading from Genesis, chapter 4, verses 16 through 26. Then Ken Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, east of Eden, Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. And he built a city, and called the name of the city after his son, Enoch. To Enoch was born Irid, and Irid was the father of Mahujael, and Mahujael was the father of Methusha, Methushael, and Methushael was the father of Lamech. And Lamech took two wives, and the name of one was Ada, and the other was Zillah. Ada bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have cattle. His brother's name was Jubal, and he is the father of all those who play the lyre and the pipe. Zillah bore Tubalcane. He was a forger of all instruments of bronze and iron. The sister of Tubalcane was Nahma. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. You wives of Lamech, hearken to what I say. I have slain a man for wounding me, a young man for striking me. If Cain is avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy-sevenfold. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called his name Seth. For she said, God has appointed for me another child instead of Abel. For Cain slew him. To Seth also a son was born, and he called his name Enosh. 
At that time, men began to call on the name of the Lord. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. So today, I want to take a look at the prophecy of Isaiah just for a moment. We take a look and we see that the problem that they seem to be addressing in this particular passage is the arrogance in celebrating things that are not of God. Listen again to what we see here. Woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of falsehood, who draw sin as with cart ropes, who say, let him make haste, let him speed his work that we may see it. Woe to those, says continuing on, to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And then this great line, woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and shrewd in their own sight. And again, woe to those who are heroes at drinking wine and valiant men in mixing strong drink. So all of these things are matters of boast. You can imagine being called a hero at drinking wine. That's obviously a pretty strong condemnation. And so what we're seeing here is that even in the time of Isaiah, we're dealing with a way that people want to celebrate their own sin and they want to celebrate things that are contrary to the teachings of God. And so they call evil good and they call good evil and they celebrate trivial things instead of the things that truly matter. We deal with that to some degree today. I'm not going to get into specifics. You can figure out your own ideas of this. But when you take a look at the things that we celebrate culturally, and then you take a look at the things that we should be celebrating culturally, you can see that those things are too different. Well, I'll give you a classic example. We should be paying teachers more and football players less. That's an opinion, of course. You can go your own distance with that, but you can see the point. If you're doing things to build up society, you should be rewarded. If you're doing things to celebrate a sport, maybe not so much. But our system is what it is, and that's part of what we have to wrestle with. But as Christians, as followers of God, it's important for us not to celebrate the things that are of this world to the same degree that we celebrate the things that are truly holy. And so pursuing a life of holiness, we need to do what we can to make sure that we have our priorities straight. We call good, good, and we call evil, evil. We call light, light, and we call dark, dark. The problem is, too often in this world, we do the reverse. We celebrate bad things and we mute the things that are good. Again, Lent gives us an opportunity to reflect on these things and to do what we can to do a better job of making these things in their proper priority. So may God give us the strength and the sustenance to be able to do that. And may he be with us in all of our journeys that we may come to truly know him and his expectations and do what we can to celebrate the things that are truly divine and put in their proper place the things that are not. May God bless you, those whom you love today and always, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. I thank you very much for joining me today. I pray you have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.